uh, I sent it to my favorite uncle in Washington and he said, Madhu's sweet words were indeed intoxicating. Have a good day. <laughs> okay, so thank you for that. So welcome to this talk. Uh, Madhu gave me this topic when he met me at his book release. I think we got chatting and came up with this idea to talk here. I've just on before on advertising and other things, but this time with Madras week looming up, we thought of, uh, the focus is on the fun and humor of Chennai, as or as I gave it a subtitle, we speak Chenglish here. But uh, since you know with Madras week coming up, we should really be calling it Madras, not Chennai, and uh, call it Madras or Madras or or Madras or whatever. Uh, our city by any other name to borrow from your ancestor, Shakespeare, Peter. <laughs> uh, a city by any other name would still smell as sweet as Malipu. Not rose, okay? So, here we are. And so my talk is how we speak this peculiar mix that only we know. Uh, I guess all of you know Tamil and wherever I can, I will do terrible translations for Peter and Swapnil. <laughs> but just hold on to your seat. There's a lot of leg pull about exactly both of you in my presentation. <laughs> and uh, uh, then, uh, so we speak Chinese of this fabulous mix of, mix of English, or what I would like to say. It's a real a tongue in cheek look at our own mother tongue, you know. And you know, just as every state, this funny thing about the tongue, every state will say, you know, there's nothing to beat the food from my state, or the sweets of my state. You know, everybody swears by that. And then again, we swear by the sweetness of our language. You know, there's such a sense of familiarity and joy and bonding when you hear your mother tongue being spoken in a train, you know, or some other part of the country. It's such a uh, case of bonding, isn't it? So everybody thinks that, you know, the, 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 the language that we speak is really special. So and, uh, that's how it goes on. But uh, just as every state somehow has contributed some phrase to the national lingo, you know, English has done a lot of it, but closer to south, in our, next to our neighbors, Bangalore, they contributed this wonderful word called whatever it is, Madi. Most often used with adjust Madi, repair Madi, sit Madi, wake up Madi. You just use the word Madi and you just feel you're talking Kannada, isn't it? <laughs> so, so what is this one phrase that we, Chennai from Tamil Nadu, what is this one phrase we contributed to the national, our national language as we call it, which it's, uh, people really don't know, it really came right down from good old Tamil Nadu from a creation called Quick Gun Murugan, remember this man? And he used this phrase, any guesses? No. Mind it. Mind it. Okay? So, this phrase which all of our Indians use and say, mind it, I say, that's the way we speak, man. It actually came, it's a, came from Tamil Nadu. And if you flip it, you might see IT mind, you know, and actually it came from an IT mind. Our city is full of these really wacko IT minds who make funny, strange connections. And there were these two ex-IIT boys who really made a commercial for Channel V, starring Quick and Murugan. And this line, you know, we are like this only, you know, and it always goes together with that. So. Everybody thinks that, you know, my state, we are like this one. So, where did, it, where did this funny Englishness creep into us? So, with Madras week coming up and we'll be reminded of it time and time again, I'm really going back again to Peter's ancestors, <laughs> the British. When they arrived, to, and we all know that the East India Company really began right here in our city and in a place called, can you, do you know what this old picture is? Yeah, you better be ready because the Madras quiz is coming up, you better recognize at least one picture. This is Fort St. George, 
where the whole East India Company first set, set, set themselves up. And in this wonderful little sleepy fishing village, which was more than 350 years ago, you know, the Britishers, they sat in their verandas and they, you know, the bearers brought to them uh, millet and tanni, which they, of course they made into both the thorny soup. <laughs> and uh, so they were sipping their soup and they saw these kattu marams going up and down those boats and they called them katamarans. <laughs> yeah, those are all our words. <laughs> And uh, soon, you know, since they were stealing our foods and renaming them, it was only fair that we took their British food names and made it ours. So, this is what we did. <laughs> As you can still see, you know, in boards, in all these kutti chai kadas, you will see this board. Though, of course, in, in this train, especially when you go in a Brindavan Express, from Bangalore to Chennai and back. This is one word. Bread per omelette, bread per omelette, bread per omelette, bread per omelette. It's one word. Okay? So it actually breaks down into bread, butter, and omelette. <laughs> so, so why not? I mean, if they could uh, corrupt our words, why can't we corrupt the British words? So we have it. And so I took this ride around my city once and just looking for these hilarious ways and most often with food. And I saw this curious thing on White's Road. <laughs> I thought maybe an A was missing, you know, over here. Big, uh, afraid, maybe a bunch of fish so scared that they've just been caught and shivering, you know, oh, I'm going to be gobbled any minute. Then I said, okay, just another word. Spelt and written by the way, a true Chenya, a Madrasi wants to write it. <coughs> What's wrong with that? If he calls it freight fish, he will write freight fish. Who's to stop us? And so also this other one that I saw once, Mela Cheri. <laughs> now before Mehra Gandhi sees this, he gets very alarmed and think, oh God, this this how Madras you know deals with its stray dog problems. You serve them up as mutton puffs, you know. So we have to reassure her. No, but just again, it's only puffs, said the way our good old Tamilians say. Though I wonder sometimes looking at it, maybe they have small sized uh, servings of hot dogs. You know, that's why they are puffs. I really wonder about that. I must do some research, further research on this. I'm talking about dogs, you know. I saw this sign and I really hope nobody is serving up. A poor doggy's feet. <laughs> so here we go, taking foods of the North Indians and making our, that also the us, the our own spelling. And speaking of North Indians, I'm going to now talk about a distant cousin of Swapnil called Manoj Behi. Maybe you've forgotten him. We all want to forget him. <laughs> Well, there was a chap called Manoj Belli, Hari Punjabi, from our Delhi office when I, when I was working in JWT. So, he got transferred to good old South India. So, when we decided to welcome him, our office was right next to Konamara Bar. So, we all had this all-nighter to work on. So, we rushed into Konamara Bar and we said, let's quickly buy him a drink and get right back to that horrible campaign we have to have ready by tomorrow morning. So, we were all in that hurry and saying quickly, let's get there fast and everything. So we sat there and we ordered the drink, which of course in its lazy way, they took their own time and the drink wasn't arriving. But I was just astonished that Manoj Beri, Punjabi, was actually making attempts to learn Tamil words and he'd already mastered one word. And we were most impressed when the waiter lazily walked past and Manoj shouted at him and said, Drink, drink, Seagram, Seagram. So we said, wow, Manoj, not bad. You learned the word to say fast, fast. Of course, this is what he meant. <laughs> Seagram means fast for the non -tipita. Okay, so the thing about these kind of words, as I said earlier, there is this bonding factor. When you hear something, Wow, that sounds very familiar. So I'm going to tell you about sound words, which are sound very familiar. Okay? 
Now, this is another hilarious thing about we, us Indians. You know, we they, we're all defined by the sound words that we speak in. You know, and uh, uh, we you know we uh, the the Britishers say well. So what? We invented, we even have a word for it, it's called anomatopia, you know, where click sounds like click. The word itself sounds like the action or the sound of it. Or crow, you know, crow sounds like the, a crow. Nah, Peter Millions have got it better. Kaka is better, isn't it? Ka, ka, ka. So we call our kaka, kaka. Kaka, what sound does it make? Kaka. I think that's the better one. So we really do improve on what this anomatopoeia that the British passed on, the unpronounceable, unspellable word that they gave us, we get it right. So what are these sound words that totally define us? And you can you can always say, at every state, we'll say, oh, our sound words, you know, they, they are very special and they're nothing like anything else. And uh, I'll tell you a, a funny anecdote here once. Uh, I used to work on Pepsi and one of those brands of Pepsi is uh, Seven up, you know, with that Fido Dido. You remember the character Fido Dido? Okay, so uh, I went to the Pepsi head office once to present my big script on Fido Dido for the next season, and I was landed there in this rather imposing-looking uh, conference room, and you know, many suited people, people I've never met before, from the you know the top guy in Pepsi to all the marketing team, and I went in a bit nervously, and I use. As you may have guessed by now, a lot of sound actions, noise when I speak. So I, I had to go and present a script for the next script for Pepsi, a film, a commercial. So somewhere along the way, I was talking and I said, and then Fido, Fido Dido, he runs and he runs right into a closed door. Damal, he hits and he falls down. One man at the end of the conference room, his smile just stretched. <laughs> he gave me such a grin and very good script. <laughs> and while well, the rest were wondering, what was that noise now? You know? So I knew how Tam Bram man sitting there, you know, posted in Delhi. He likes my script. So my Bengali son-in-law, he would have said, and Fido Dido went, Thomash, he hit the tail, door. You know, or we would have said Dada if you were from the north, maybe. But my good old, you know, Damal was as South Indian as in Idli, I can tell you. He got my script through. So these are these sound words, and you can never really talk of these sound words and go to this, uh, you know, Tamil speaking class and just pick it up. Because unless you enroll as a baby, because these are sounds which you know, just you hear and you know what they mean. You know? And talking about. Uh, Ladies, I will show you. Okay, I will show you the first of these sound words, and I would like you to even imagine what it, the hell it means. You know, it's not yeah. Even a, a wheel, wheel. You think maybe a car makes that sound or a cycle? No, it's a baby. baby. Only, have you ever heard it? Tam, maybe Tamil babies say wheel, wheel when they cry. What is the wheel, wheel now? You know. What on earth is that? But that's the we think that a baby makes this wheel wheel sound. Yeah? <coughs> and then so on. So I, when a person, I often I think, I have a feeling all my relatives, and especially my close relatives, often say this about me. When Hindu goes, starts talking, she keeps on talking. <laughs> So, then here again, when a person 
drinks too fast, what do we say? <laughs> when you're standing about lazily doing nothing, <laughs> and then that sudden downpour yesterday or during the floods, this is how we were. Soda, soda, and no time. And before long, of course, the sun is out in Chennai, and then back to. <laughs> Though I love these words, and I think they're really, really descriptive. Though. I'm, I'm waiting, I'm really waiting to get into a real big fight with the auto current so that I can really slap him, you know. And hear this word. I can't imagine how this sound comes. Palar, okay. I have to hit and fight out. I'm going to get into a deliberate fight one of these days. Okay. So, so these are these words and I have the most fantastic, delightful actual evidence of this sound word, my friend Ramesh Venkat, you know, he's a biker and he went to his mechanic quite recently and he, he, he was so excited by this receipt he got from his mechanic. He put it on Facebook, I put, took it off Facebook and it's in my presentation now. And this is what, look carefully at what the mechanic wrote was wrong with Ramesh's bike. AC cable adjust must be from Karnataka. And then change pocket, which I thought RIP, maybe rest, maybe rest in pieces, you know. <laughs> maybe it's so far gone, there's no hope. So that part really has to be out. But he spelled wash correct rather than was. You know? Was Panama. Somehow he's managed to spell one word correctly over there. So, so here is this sound word. And why not? I mean, it's so clear, you know, there's no doubt about exactly what is wrong with your bike and you know, some technical words. Yeah? So, <clears throat> then there is this other peculiar thing that we Indians do is reducing everything down to initials, you know, SRK, titles of movies, you know, KG, you know, all those current Johar films are all a series yeah. of K, K this and K that. So, we, we reduce all these. So, I have, uh, often in our language with no clue why the hell are we using it, we use initials in English and I'm, I'm going to put up three now and I'm going to see how many of you can guess. You've used these words but you may not know why the hell you, what the origin is. OC is for all company, on company cost. East India company. K is not a delinquent. Not others. Not others. So sorry, you don't have a current or type of hamper to give you. Yeah. But you would have. Can you say it? No, 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 when the, you know, when a piece of work is done on company cost, cost. so the, you didn't have to occur any expense. But to this day, you say, I'll be saying it when I go home. So, how did the talk go? Oh, see, there's a lot different cuts to them. They're going to say that. I need to go eat after that, but oh, see, the free of is after chicken. Okay? So, oh, see, you say. Then we say, KD is a, you know, a, a kind of a bad character. They say, hey, and the terrible apa there, the kiri la nikar denge. That means don't go there. There is this horrible black characters, dark characters who are going to catch you. So those is K, known delinquent, again a British throwback. And O B is out of barracks when you're outside and you haven't turned up for work. O B was a code word to say this guy is fooling around. He's not doing his work. One more version is where to business. Huh? Where to business. Oh, see, and there is one more very bad one, but there, there's a child called Vidula here, so I can't see. It's much younger than all of us. Okay, so there is this another good old English word which uh, the good Tamil mamas, especially Tamil grandfathers, have kind of completely kind of painted it and made their own. And this usually happens when the child comes home 
with this maths paper with perhaps 99 and their grandfather's going to shout, Hirada, Tundu Tumbu the Vangi Kai. What about Sentam? No, I have not heard anyone else say this. Sentam na Mangano, you know. So we used to wonder what the, what on the, I thought some word my, my grandfather made up. But this is this good old Sentam word. Yeah? So, where are we now? Okay, now comes some really terrible jokes. Pardon me, but then they are part of our language. And I'm really sorry, there is no translation, no subtitles going for the non Tamilians. And we apologize, but they are really, really bad jokes. You'll be, bad. You'll be happy that we don't translate them. And these are what we call Kadi jokes. Okay, there's this ghastly punning of English, Tamil words, and English. So, you all can take a slight nap here for the next two slides. Okay. Here's a kadi joke. Okay. It usually goes in rhymes. Car puller tire in the other step. Yeah. Car puller. If there is a tire inside your car, it's called a step knee. What on earth is this? just supposed to rhyme that part out. I swear I wrote something much better than this <laughs> to win my prize. So, here's one more. Files na pa, ukanda pa Yeah, I have to sit down and look at my files. <laughs> However, <laughs> How I said. It's really bad. I want you anyway. Yeah, now, but this another word that again, we, uh, we Tamilians have just made their own. Everything is super. Super this, super that, super this. You know, everything is just It's accompanied by actions, it's accompanied by Rajnikan most of the time. So everything is super. It's so one word that describes every kind of super little. And uh, so, uh, let me tell you, uh, and usually, and we've done that for, in our agencies, it's about the super idea. Have you got a super idea? So, I'll try to show you one real super idea. And uh, Rajan will know, and his brother, Shashatri, will know, being in our agencies, you have to come up with an idea. You do everything on earth. You try to steal from books. You try to, you do all sorts of things. Nothing happens. You haven't got an idea. You pray, isn't it? We pray very hard. We're extremely religious people in our age. Please pray will save me. So this really happened to a friend of mine, Chax. Okay, I work on Pepsi and my friend Chax, he used to work on Coca-Cola, the rival. We were good friends but enemies at work. So once uh, Chax was breaking his head for a poster for Coca-Cola, you know, and he, uh, he had to get this award-winning poster idea of winner gold medal at Khan and all of that. So, nothing worked. So he went to Kapalishar Kovil and he prayed. He said, please God, when I open my eyes, give me an idea. God heard his prayers, Kapali, <laughs> super God. He heard his prayers and when Chaks opened his eyes, there was an idea right in front of him and it won him an award at Khan. <laughs> See, I did that. Super idea. Super idea. You know the cast mark? Yeah. So there it is. So anyway, now we are back to our. The idea was being passed by the table, not Kavali. Okay. Sorry. I had to use Kavali somewhere. <laughs> I think you have to make it very current. <laughs> I also have a move of Rajikan suddenly got shy and I'm not doing it. <laughs> so, so we're back to our mean eating houses, you know, back to the streets of Chennai. And here's something you saw in Dinagar. <laughs> and as you can see, it's Indian, that's us. North Indian is some other country. <laughs> and then, of course, Chinese is another country also. So, 
they have every kind of cuisines, you know, all sorts can come there. Don't say acids. Don't say CO USA in this. Okay, so uh, there was this, well, talking about Chinese items, there was this, uh, I'll tell you the origin of uh, one famous Chinese item, very famous in Madras. And uh, actually, it was too enterprising, it was a couple, uh, husband and wife, who first invented this and these are their names. <laughs> and, <laughs> here's their dish. <laughs> There's a, it's their signature dish and of course it's often uh, accompanied by a mean dish, you know, chow mein. And so what if that locally we just bring in some sambar powder? That's the way the outer is like, you know, clarity. So we should, really should not complain that what makes it really mean is the sambar powder which is attached to it. So, and then there is this other, we love North Indian dishes of course, and we try to make that ours. And, it, and I, I wonder if uh, Swapni can guess the origin of this. Because there is this dish which I saw, which is put on a board proudly, you know, where the sanko is, where the alwar pet signal is. I was going and I nearly had a crash because I was looking back to see the dish and it says today is special. <laughs> so, but you know, maybe it goes back to the Dynast dynasty dish handed over the generations. I'm copyrighted and not to say all that. So, good, good old, you know, when it's orange balls come, you know, that gravy. Kofta, now you know what that means. And then of course we also rename some Punjabi dishes. Uh, after what? Famous films, I think, sometimes. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so my advice is, if you want to eat North Indian food, please never go anywhere near a South Indian looking place. And go to these places. <laughs> I, you notice that they've written it twice, you know. In case you didn't get the Punjabi. Though I wonder if the second one has a bathroom attached. Punjabi. Maybe, you know, free public bathroom for you to use. Yeah, very thoughtful of it. Yeah? And, uh, and uh, then I'll, I'll just take you a quick run through of uh, some things that are actually found in shot. Okay? <laughs> Sorry. upstairs and have a fit. Okay, then now. Uh, okay, so we're making so much fun of Chenglish. Now, you know, other countries are no better, let me tell you. So let me give you very quick examples of Chinglish. Chinglish, you know? And they really, I wonder if when the Chinese held the Olympics, oh boy, all over town, the howlers that they put up, you know, we all, we used to get those forwards, you know? seen outside the stadium, seen all the way to the stadium and all of that. So I picked up a few of those. Okay. Here are just a couple of them. Next to the AC. <laughs> okay, how about this one? You know, where all those runners, marathon runners are running and uh, so they saw the sign. Drive sideways from here. I'd love to see a car driving it sideways. And how about this? This is outside the Olympic Village. <laughs> yeah? So, and, uh, and it's not only the Chinese, there's also a very funny one which my friend picked up in France, and I want to show that to you. <laughs> Sorry. Please leave your values at the front desk. Yeah? <laughs> Just get rid of them. 
once and for all. Since I know why you've come into this hotel, we all know. So don't fool with us, just leave your values behind. Okay? So with that, it brings me straight to somewhat the end of my talk. It's going to finish fast too. But, and here's another word. So Indian, and each state thinks it's ours. But it's the while the British must be getting really alarmed at the strange directions their language is taking, you know, in different, not only in India, in different parts of the country as we just saw, different parts of the world, as I gave you some examples. So, we have a way of really using directions itself with this one word called spring. Yeah? So, imagine if uh, uh, somebody lost somewhere, you know, around Germany and trying to get to Nahari to this, and they, to Savera, and saying, I have to get to this talk in a hurry now. So, how do I get there? So, what would somebody say? Sir, sir, easy, sir. You go like this, straight. You go straight, straight. <laughs> no. where, where do you want to go? So, no, first I want to stop at Gumbo 3 because I want to get some good chart over there. Oh, for us, sir. You want to stop at? Eh? Then you go, you double like that, and you go on Cathedral Road. You just go straight, stop. <laughs> then you go straight, straight, then you stop. So, you, uh, if there are turns, then you go straight, then you go straight, then you go straight, then you go straight. Then you go straight. <laughs> so, if you have a video camera, it's really useful if you actually shoot the sequence and then look at this hand directions. Oh, now we turn left and now we turn right. Now we go very fast straight. So this one word does it all. You know, you can reach wherever you want and I think it's a very wonderful way of telling you how to get to places. So, so much for that word. So, and now I'm going to tell you what happened when I went straight to a, a very funny place. I went shopping one day and uh, I was told that there's this lovely sale going on. You know this uh, road uh, near going to leading to Theosophical Society uh, after fashion folks. And you can stay in that Besana area. You all know that area. So, we heard that there's this fantastic sale going on of hand looms and you know, really low prices and bed sheets and pillow covers. So my sister and I jumped into an auto and we head straight, we took that so You go straight, straight, straight. You come to Avin no, then you go straight. Okay? Straight, stop. There it is. And then we bought and we bought so many things and then a kind of uh, Killed set in, you know. Oh my god, what have we been doing for so long? And we stepped out. You know what? The guilt was right up there. Instant <laughs> guilt. Yeah? So, can you any of you guess what, what we bought in this shop? A quilt! <laughs> okay, so. Uh, it, it just struck me that, you know, if the Britishers, if the way we massacred their language, if they ever came and they, you know, we were pulled into court and we were said, you know, you murdered our language and what do you plead? Guilt. Guilty. We have to plead we have massacred their language and we suffer from this guilt. So while we took this picture and put it on our Facebooks and made a lot of people laugh, and a lot of people wonder what the hell does that word mean? Okay, so we've cracked it with this guilt, and then it happens again. My friend Mridula, she said, You go straight into Kamaraj Avenue, which is my area in Arepuram, and you go straight there, and then you, you keep looking to your left, and then you look up and you see this fabulous signage over there. And here's this shop, and that's my final slide. Here's this fantastic slide that just sums up a good old Tamil. We, we don't have pa, we pa, or ba, or ka, or ka, it's all the same. So we will write whatever we feel like. And there's a shop, it is actually, uh, there's this uh, shop run by a Muslim gentleman with an unfortunate name. We'll come to that shortly. Very unfortunate name. This uh, Muslim gentleman takes, uh, uh, you know, Jewelry, broken jewelry, he repairs them, then he gives it a gold covering and sells it to you like the real stuff. Fake, real fakes, he says, okay? So, here's a 
this signage for all of you to see. <laughs> Saddam Hussein, the unfortunate name, killed Shah. Yeah? So, we, wow, you know, while the world is still debating, you know, is Saddam was he guilty, was he not guilty? Here is a place where it's openly admitted that Saddam Hussein was guilty, and there there's little ornaments to tell you what it is. You know, they're not selling quilts, but he's selling gilded jewelry. So, if you're ever going down that road, don't go, go straight, stop your auto, keep looking in the left and see this, the address is over there for you, 54 Kamara Shalai, and look for the shop. In Kamara, it means kill the shop. Yeah, that's right. But in English, we've seen it, we, uh, we, there's a big controversy what it actually means. Is it gilding or kill? No? Yeah. So, however, it made us all of us laugh quite a bit. And then who cares, you know? I mean, too bad. Mind it. We speak like this only. We won't apologize. Thank you.